want to thank you very much. You know, this was supposed to be a very small little gathering. They said they've never seen anything like it here. It's, uh, they actually talk like this is a small part, and a lot of people don't show up. But, boy, they showed up today. We broke every record. And this is really friends. We're doing a big speech later, but this is an intimate gathering. This was supposed to be a very intimate. This is a little bit intimate, but it is intimate. But this is a gathering of people that have been so supportive, and we're going to get out there, and we're going to get out that vote, that caucus vote, which is very important. And, you know, last time I was leading, I was beating everybody, but they didn't do the caucus thing too well. And I learned a lot. We went to New Hampshire. We knocked them dead. We did very well here. We came in second. Those are my only second. I don't like second, though. <laughs> then we won the race against the Democrats. That's a big one, right? We won the race. But against, we won it against beautiful Hillary. See, I call it beautiful now. Because we saved, we used the word crooked for somebody else. You know who that is, right? That's a very accurate description. But uh, we ended up winning, but I learned so much during the process. This is the first race, and I'll never forget my first race ever in politics because I wasn't a politician. I like to think of myself not as a politician now, but I came into Iowa, and I came in second out of 18, right? So we had 18. I came in second. They said, Trump suffers a major defeat. It was — that was the beginning with the fake news. Trump suffered. I came in second, and, you know, normally people would be thrilled to come in at that position. And, uh, honestly, they didn't have a good — a good group. And now we have a group like we've never had before. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So I remember my daughter, Ivanka. She was in Des Moines, a big area. And she was uh, in Des Moines with uh, — by herself. She was waiting. And she was waiting for these people to come in because, you know, you have to have a big staff, and they come in, and you talk about how wonderful Trump is and all this. But Ivanka calls me, Daddy, they don't have anybody here, the company that did the job. They weren't so hot. They don't have anybody here, Daddy, but I'll take it. But uh, we did, you know, pretty well. Then we went on to uh, win the state against Hillary, and we won the state the second time, and we won it big. In fact, the second time in the overall election, we got millions and millions of more votes than we did in the first election. We were told, all of us were told, that if you uh, got the same number of votes, 63 million, as we got in 16, that the election would be over. But we got, like, 12 million? A lot. We don't even know, because nobody knows, because nobody understands what the hell happened with that election. But we're not letting it happen again, that I can tell you. We're not going to let that happen again. <laughs> Millions more votes. It was very interesting. I did — I had a meeting with one of the big papers, New York Times, actually. They said, what happened the second time? Well, we did much better. Well, what do you mean you did better? We got millions more votes, millions and millions more votes. Uh, and they said, yeah, that's sort of right when you think about it, I guess, right? But we're going to do something — we're going to do something that's historic now, and we're going to bring our country back from the dead. Our country is dying. It's dying. When you look at what's happening at the border, when you look at all the things that are going on, our country is in such serious shape. So I just want to thank you all for joining us today. Special day. It's a special place. We're going to be back five or six times in the next uh, period of you — know, think of it. We're talking about four months. Can you believe it? When it was four years, I said, that's a long time. Now we start in four months. You're the first. I kept you first, by the way. I hope you know that, because people like to take credit. <laughs> people like to take credit. There's only one person that can take credit. I kept you first. And uh, as you know, the Democrats didn't do that. But we'll worry about that later. We want to get through the caucus. We want to get through it right away, and we want to win it by numbers bigger than we won it even the last time, if that's possible. So thank you all. In less than four months from now, we're going to win the Iowa caucuses in a historic landslide. I think it's going to be a landslide. You see what's going on with the polling. We've been like a rocket ship. We've been going like this. And the polls have been incredible, both uh, against the Republicans and against — I mean, against the Republicans, we're up 60 points, 60. Uh, think of it. Who the hell ever thought that was going to happen so quickly? They crashed and burned. They crashed and burned. But we're up — we're up 60. Thank you. I love you, too, even though it's not generally my thing. It's not generally my thing when a guy screams out, I love you. But that's okay. 
We love you all. But uh, and the polls were up uh, massive numbers. We'll talk about them in a couple of minutes. And we may take a few questions from people, too, if you want. I always say that. You know, if I don't want to really take uh, questions, I say at the very end, and now we'll take questions. Everybody's like, oh, I don't have time. When you say it at the beginning, people are thinking the whole damn speech, and they're thinking. But we're going to take a few questions. I think you can handle it. They have some mics around here, so we'll handle it. And uh, you think Joe Biden does that? Well, from a group of people. <laughs> we'll take some questions. I did Meet the Press this weekend. They got fantastic ratings. I call it Meet the Fake Press. And they had a uh, fantastic rating. And it was one question after another, after another, after another, and went through his whole hour. Then Kristen Welker, and she was, you know, nice, although kept interrupting me because she wasn't loving some of the answers I was giving, you know. But you love the answers I was giving. But uh, the beautiful thing, they said, I sat down for an hour, and then I did a Megyn Kelly one, and she had, you know, just, boy, she became nastier all of a sudden. She was pretty nasty, didn't you think? Anybody that watched it. But they both asked many questions, many, many questions. And I could have gone on for hours, but, you know, there's a period of time, and you say, that's it. So they had like an hour. They had an hour and a half. And it would be, uh, I think, 32 questions on 32 different subjects. And uh, Biden can't do that. Biden can't. Maybe one question where he goes, uh, okay, I'll take... A question from, wait. I want uh, A, B, C, Ruth. And then she gives him a question, and then he reads the answer. Uh, here's the answer. No, we're, we're this country. We have to, we have to get this country straight. Now, that's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. I want to thank my friend Congress Lee Hunt. He really starved. It is in who happens to come from, as you know. But, Wesley, thank you both very much. And thank all three of you. Thank all three, because they have their been. And thank you very much for coming up. This is a great honor. A very respected guy. And Jackson County Republican Chairwoman Darla Schopel. Where is Darla? Where is Darla? She's here. Hi, Darla. Oh, very, very beautiful. <laughs> you look great. Thank you, Darla. I heard you're doing a fantastic job, everybody tells me. Uh, Jackson County Attorney John Keyes. John, you around? Hi, John. Great. Central casting for an attorney. <laughs> That's a good thing. My senior advisor, Representative Bobby Kaufman. Where's Bobby? Bobby is doing... Hi, Bobby. Oh, you gave yourself the worst seat in the house. Look, he's over by the wall. He knows how to take care of the customer, right, Bobby? Say hello to your father. His father's fantastic, too. State Representative Steve Bradley is here. Steve, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you very much, Steve. And a very special thanks to Luna Stoltenberg. Do you know, so, where, is, where is she, by the way? You know, uh, there's a man that's in charge of NATO named Stoltenberg. You know that, right? And he's the Secretary General, and he loves Trump because I was able, you know, we were supporting NATO, and we were giving so much money disproportionately. And they're representing, you know, they're over there, we're over here. It's much more important for them. And I got them hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in pay-up money because they were not paid. They were NATO countries, they were not paid. We were protecting all of these European countries. And for years and years, they weren't paying or they were paying not a good amount of money. But the name was Stoltenberg, same name as yours. You are so fantastic. She said, I pray for you every day. I write a letter to you every single day. Have you gotten them? I'm saying, uh, yeah, sure. No. <laughs> but she said, I pray and I do this. And I said, you are incredible. And she just gave me her endorsement, and she's highly respected here. So I want to thank you very much. And that Stoltenberg is very good, too, I have to tell you. He's the Secretary General, and he's been, he's been great. He said, you know, President Trump came in here, and he left, and he got hundreds of — I mean, we just got hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in back. I call it delinquent, like in the real estate business, right? We call it delinquent. They were delinquent. Every, almost every country. Seven weren't. It's a total of 28. 
But most of them were, some were totally delinquent. They didn't pay for a long time. And he said, you know, he left and he got the money pouring in by the billions. And we ended up getting hundreds of billions of dollars from these countries so we didn't have to pay. And uh, we didn't have to pay disproportionately. And the money they have now is the money that I raised them. He said, you know, Bush would come in and Obama would come in. They'd all come in. They'd make a speech. They'd leave and that would be the end of it. They wouldn't say, I came in the first time, saw that this was wrong. Came in the second time about six months later. I said, you got to pay up. He said, nobody ever said that. So it was good. So I appreciate very much and thank you, darling. We appreciate it very much. There are those that say this is the greatest political movement of all time. I think it is MAGA. You know, when Biden criticizes MAGA, I say, no, it, it means make America great again. What's to criticize? You know, how do you criticize MAGA? It's they go, oh, those MAGA people, those MAGA people. Anybody that says that doesn't love our country. It's called make America great again. But this is the greatest movement of all time. You know, yeah. You know, over the years, and I was not in politics, although I was on the other side, like writing checks for everybody that I liked that was running, but I wasn't in per se. And But I'd watch very carefully because I found it fascinating. And over the years, you'd watch these people that sometimes they'd win like an election, come in second, come in third, fourth, and they'd be famous if they came in second, third, fourth in a primary. And they would go along a lifetime, I mean, literally a lifetime, and they'd become, you know, successful people, and they'd be very respected politically. And we came in first in, if you were last time, in virtually in every state, we came in first within the Republican Party, and then we did phenomenally in the election. But 2016, we won almost all of them also against professionals. You know, we had 18 people that were senators, for the most part, senators and governors. They weren't, they weren't stupid people. And we came in, and this was a movement that nobody's ever seen before. You know, when that happens, if you uh, almost win a state, you become so — Pat Buchanan's an example in New Hampshire. He came in — he did well. He did very well. And he's a terrific guy in many ways, right? We all sort of know him. And uh, he did — he did really well. I think he came in second. And, you know, he had a wonderful political career. We came in first in almost every state, think of it, as a group. First, and we won. And then we won the election against beautiful Hillary. Beautiful Hillary, beautiful woman. So it's pretty amazing. So it's the greatest, it's the greatest movement of all time and in this country, and I think probably largely beyond this country. But if we win this time, this will be bigger than anything we've ever done. This will be at a level that's never been done, much bigger than had we done it the traditional way, which we did do, but we just didn't get credit for it. But we did do it. We'll win it three times. I mean, the, that's the way I look at it. We'll win it three times. But this psychologically and in many other ways, and you understand the different ways, but because one of the things of taking this pause is it shows how bad they are. It shows how bad their policies are. You look at the border. You look at all of the things that are so horrible that are happening. And it shows how bad they are. And we'll be able to do things and get things fixed in this country that probably you couldn't have really done politically or otherwise if you did it the traditional way. So it'll be something really uh, spectacular. It's going to be — I think it's going to be amazing. And I, I will tell you, so we've run twice. I've never seen the spirit that we have this time. And a lot of that spirit, because you're longing for the good old days with the greatest economy ever and all those things. But, but — How about gasoline at $1.87? How about that? No, we had the great — remember I told you I made great deals. I, I don't even talk about China because of COVID, but I made one of the greatest deals ever with USMCA, but the, maybe the best was China. $50 billion. And remember it, and you had to stay with me, the farmers I'm talking about, mostly in this case, less, less the manufacturers. They were there anyway. But they were the most loyal people. The farmers were the most loyal people. And they said, Sir, we're with you. I said, I'm going to get you all sorts of subsidies from China. They said, sir, we don't want subsidies. We just want a level playing field. That was the only ones that told me that in four years in the White House. If I said, I'm going to get you subsidies because of everybody would say, oh, give me the subsidy. I'll never forget. I had 36 farmers. They represented farmers from all over the country, a lot from Iowa. 
We're in the Oval Office in this gorgeous room, this conference room that's so beautiful and represented so many great things. Uh, less so lately. There's not too many great things happening for our country lately. But they represent it. And I said that to them. I said, I will work it so that you guys are going to be taken. And one of the gentlemen raised his hand and said, so we don't want subsidy. We don't want a handout. We want a level playing field, and nobody can beat us. And I said, what an unbelievable thing to say. It's the only time anybody said that, and that was the whole farm group. They all agreed with it. They didn't want anything. They just wanted fairness, because they were not treated fairly. It was horrible what was happening to them, <laughs> including with NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made. So, so and it was, it was really horrible. And I then made USMCA, that's Mexico, and Canada, and you know how good that is. They want to renegotiate the deal now. That's always a good sign. But we took it from the worst deal to the best deal. And uh, that was, NAFTA was probably the worst trade deal ever made. And USMCA is one of the best trade deals ever made in this country. And one of the other deals I made was with China. You're doing a lot of business with China. Now, they're not adhering to the contract anymore. I used to call every day. Are they here? Are they buying? Are they buying? Because it was $50 billion I had to buy. And, you know, I misunderstood it. They said $15 billion. I said to Sonny Perdue, the Secretary of Agriculture, good guy, I said, how much have we been hurt, the farmers been hurt in this country by China trade practices? And he said, sir, $27 billion over a period of four years. I said, that's a lot. All right, I'm going to get it back. And I got you $27, $28 billion, actually, from China. That came from China. And many of the people in this room opened up very big checks, but I got it. Everybody thought that you can't even think about getting that. I got you $28 billion. I got hundreds of billions for the country, but I got $28 billion from the farmer because of the unfair trade practices with China. Uh, the fake news doesn't want to write about that, but it's a big deal. In fact, I always say, there's no way I lose Iowa, Nebraska, any of the farm states because who the hell else would get $28 billion from China? People would say, don't even think about it. And uh, I'm honored to have done it, too. I'm honored to have done it. But we did fantastically well, and we made this uh, USMCA deal. And most people said you'd never be able to get rid of NAFTA, because, you know, these other countries have a lot of power. They have people representing them with a lot of power. It's tough to change a bad trade deal. We have the worst trade deal. We have a lot of bad trade deals. We got you open in Japan. We got you open in South Korea. We got you open in a lot of different places. But I got that done. They terminated NAFTA, which people said would be impossible, and we got the USMCA. So now, when they want to renegotiate, which they're trying to right now, don't let, don't let them do it. But we have a very short time left now, when you think about it. You know, we're talking about a very, very short time. Uh, November of next year, we're like, wow, just a little bit more than a year. But a lot of bad things can happen in a year. Tremendously bad things can happen in a year. And a lot of stupid decisions can be made. Yesterday, I watched at the uh, United Nations, and uh, I still haven't gotten over the $6 billion for five people. Six billion. They freed up $6 billion for five people. They got five. We got five. It was a hostage swap. They got five. We got five. That was the good news. The bad news is they also got six billion dollars, right? And you say, how the hell? Who would do a deal like that? But they're all bad deals. They're all — so yesterday, Biden was speaking, and uh, I won't even comment on the speech. But he said one thing, that we got rid of our gas — you know, we have gas weapons, and they're terrible, they're horrible, they're unbelievably lethal and powerful, but they're terrible. And he said that they basically uh, ended all of it. They've gotten rid of them all. And then he sort of indicated that, sadly, other countries ha haven't followed suit. Of course they haven't followed suit. They haven't followed suit because you don't get rid of them first. You get rid of them last or simultaneously. So we got rid of this tremendous, horrible, lethal power that we need if other people have it. But other people didn't get rid. And I said, how stupid is this? How stupid is this? So it's gone from us, but other people have it. And it's just step by step, day by day. So with having these people in there. I mean, the only thing they're good at is cheating in elections. It's really true, in my opinion. They're professionals at cheating, and you've got to watch those elections very carefully. Less so in your case, because, you know, you run, a, you run a good ship, but in some of these states, it's just horrible. It's just horrible when you look at what's happened. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So, if you want to save America from the, you know, I have a script here. So far, I haven't looked down at it. I'm trying to, I'm saying, when am I going to look at this script? I have these brilliant speechwriters, and I tend not to use them too much, but it's better that way, isn't it? Isn't it nice when you have a president who doesn't have to read a script? Isn't that nice? So if you want to save America from Crooked Joe and the radical left, then get out and be patriots, and you're all patriots. Make sure that they're registered Republicans. Get out. You have to register. Register Republicans. Get them out. Get all of your friends out. And 7 p.m. on Monday, January 15th. That's when it all begins, January 15th. On a Monday, it's a good, beautiful day. And you got to get them out seven, 7 o'clock in the evening. That's when it starts. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful scene, actually. In fact, I think I'll come up for it. Should I come up? Yeah, I'll come up. I'll get them out with you. I think I'll come up. I think I will. So I'll tell my, my geniuses over there will come up. But we're asking for a commitment, everybody, to whatever you can, get three people at a minimum and come out, bring them out with you. Because caucus you can do that. You know, with regular elections, it's a little, little bit stranger. But with a caucus, you can do that and get three people at a minimum and get out and let's really start the bang. Uh, they lose like 35, 40 points to Sanctimonious, who, remember, was against ethanol, wanted to end it totally. And that would be for your farmers. It would be devastating for the farmers. Uh, but they wanted to end it. And uh, I was the champion of it. I was the one that kept it going. And it was a lot of competition to not do it. And, uh, yeah. I got it for, remember, 12 months. I did the whole thing on ethanol. I became the king of ethanol, but he wanted to end it. One thing I'll say about a politician, like a guy like him, he comes in, when somebody wants to end Medicare, or when somebody wants to end Social Security, and go up to 70, minimum age 70, which is a big jump, when they want to do that early, they may change their attitude for an election, like come and say, oh, well, I love, you know, Social Security, but he voted three times against it. He wanted to cut, you know, cut the, he's a disciple of uh, Paul Rhino. Do you know who Paul Rhino is? Paul Ryan. But he's a disciple of that whole group. And uh, when they want to do it early, they may change for an election, they may get away with it. But when they change, they always go back to what they originally had. And I've been very consistent. You can read those books from years ago. I've been very consistent how we've been ripped off on trade and everything else. And I changed so much of that. And then this administration gives it right back. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. But when you want to look at how somebody is, they go back to what they original Their original thought is what their thought is. And they wanted to do big damage to Social Security. They wanted to raise that age to 70, and they wanted to do big damage to Medicare. And you can't have that. You don't deserve that. There are other things we can do that are far better, uh, where we can do a real job. But you deserve it. You get to a certain age, you deserve it. We delivered record increase in real family income. Uh, it never in, — in history, there's never been anything like it. Went up $6,000 a year. Think of that. With no inflation. We had — we didn't have inflation. We knew how to take care of inflation, you know. Look, inflation was caused because they, they stopped drilling, they stopped the energy, and that caused the inflation. Energy is so big. If you make donuts, if you make cake, if, you make, if you're a lawyer, if you're an accountant, you're heating and you're trucking, and no matter what you do, uh, energy is so big. And energy is now out of control. They did it fake. You know, we did a big thing with the strategic reserves and got them full. And then, right now, they're the lowest they've ever been. They've emptied millions and millions of barrels in order to have an election, past election, where they could keep the numbers down. They were still very high, but at least they weren't at 5 and $6. So just today, gasoline hit $5 again. And it's going to probably go up. It looks like it's going to go up. There's no, there's no reason. Yeah, it is true. Drill, baby, drill. I gave that answer in CNN. What would you do? Well, start off with drill, baby, drill, and the place went crazy. And it was the CNN audience, too. You figure that one out. No, but they don't want to pay either, so it's crazy. But we had it down to numbers. Actually, we had to raise it up a little bit because the oil companies, they were all going to go out of business. They, they never produced so much. They did a great job. And, uh, you know, they did a great job for themselves, to be honest. But it was uh, 
We had it down below $2. And for a little while, we had it down to $1.50. But that's where we had to say, got to go up a little bit. But now it's hitting $5 again. And uh, we're not going to let — we're not going to let it happen, because that is what caused inflation. And inflation is called a country buster. When you have inflation — you can go back 200 years, look at Germany, look at countries, what they went through with inflation. They were destroyed. I mean, literally, they were destroyed. They had to start all over again. And uh, we've had the biggest inflation we've had in 52 years, so that's a lot of years. And it's been a lot of suffering. I see bacon is up six times — six times. Bacon. Who would think, right? So people aren't ordering bacon. Then they say, oh, it came down a little bit. Yeah, they're not ordering it, which is not good for you either, by the way. But they're not ordering it. But so many uh, food products now are going up and through the roof. So we're going to stop it. And uh, I just want to tell you that it's, it's an honor to have been able to control inflation. And it wasn't that hard, because so much of it has to do with the energy sector. And we were going to be energy — we were actually energy independent. Nobody thought that was possible. We're energy independent. Just think of that. We didn't need — for the first time ever, we didn't need anybody's energy. We didn't have to guard the Gulf. We didn't have to do anything. We had all — you know, we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other nation by far. Think of it. And just think of how incredible that is, you know. So under — under our leadership, we built almost 500 miles of wall. You know, they like to say, oh, it was really 58 miles. No, no. You know what they do? They take — this is how vicious they are. They, and you see the wall. You see miles as far as the eye can see. We built almost — and I had to do it because we have Mitch McConnell working with the Democrats all the time, you know, which is a horror show. Horror. Horror show. So I took it out of the military. I said, you know, this is an invasion of our country, and I'll take it out of the military. And we did that. And it was a tiny fraction for the military, and the military agreed with it. But what they did is, in order to demean — because they always try — their misinformation, disinformation, almost the same thing, by the way, close. Somebody — anybody want to give me a definition of the difference? Because it's almost — it's close enough we won't waste our time. But what happens is, if there was a two-by-four, 50 years old, laying there rotted, where there used to be a little wall, a little barricade or something, They'd say, oh, well, he didn't build the wall there. That was a renovation, even though we'd throw that junk out. We'd take down, like, uh, a one-foot wall of wood that was rotted and gone, and just literally gone, and take it away. And then we'd put up 30-foot and 40-foot walls, right, all over. All steel. Everything that — those walls, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to have concrete plank. But the people that bought up — uh, Border Patrol are fantastic people. And ICE. These are fantastic people. They don't get enough credit. And they say, sir — they say, sir, you have to — you have to be able to see through it. You have to see who's on the other side. So that went my idea of plank, you know, like uh, from a parking garage. You can do 60 feet, 50 feet plank. But uh, and you just try and keep the graffiti off as much as possible, right? Because the graffiti begins, in, which I hate. I hate to see it. But that's what I wanted to do. But. We had meetings with them, and we actually had mountain climbers coming in and climbing different uh, things. And they were able to get a plank easy, and they had a much harder time doing this. But they also needed uh, — they wanted steel on the outside. They wanted concrete, heavy-grade concrete on the inside. They wanted rebars inside the concrete. So you have three different substances for cutting. It's very hard to cut, very, very hard. So I did what they wanted. And then they wanted, you know, the plate. Do you ever notice the plate on top? I wanted to leave it off. I don't like it visually. But that's called an anti-climb plate. It makes it much harder to climb the wall. And some of these people, got to say, they are athletes. They climb a wall like there's nothing to it, and they have 200 pounds of drugs on their back. They're going up like — it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. We had people show us things that I would say are pretty impressive. But uh, that's an anti-climb uh, bar, they call it. Uh, it's a, a very important element to stop people from climbing over the wall. So we did the, almost 500 miles of it, and then we uh, were all getting prepared. We had it all bought, and we could have done another 200 miles because we needed more. We, we did what we said we were going to do, but then we could have done more, and we were, had it all bought, and we had the election was ended and rigged, by the way, and we didn't take over. And what they did — and this is the first time I realized they were serious because I thought they were playing games — I realized they didn't want to build security. They wanted to have an open border so that people can come in from 
other prisons, from prisons all over the world, from mental institutions and insane asylums all over the world. We have people coming in from all over the world, not just the four or five countries that we think of our, our neighbors as neighbors. We had — we have people coming now from all over the world. We had the safest border in the history of our country. Now we have the worst border, I believe, in the history of the world. I don't believe there's any third-world country that has a border like we have. And I think the real number is going to be when — when you really add it up, and I think if the numbers ever come out, I think they're going to have 15 million people by the end of this year would have come into this country under this lunatic regime of fascists and communists and everything else. So I think it's a — I think it's a terrible, terrible thing. But when we get in, we'll be able to stop it. We have Tom Homan. We have uh, all of the — the greatest people. We have such great people. You know, if Biden went to the beach — you know, he goes to the beach all the time, right? Do you ever notice? Somebody's working him. He's got these consultants. And I think they think he looks good in a bathing suit. <laughs> and he doesn't look good in a bathing suit. And somebody's giving him very bad — very, very bad advice. And uh, when you look at it, and uh, all he had to do is, if he went to the beach and didn't do anything, you would have the strongest border you've ever had right now. But they decided to get rid of — stay in Mexico. We had a policy, remain in Mexico. Remain in Mexico. How good is that? And we had to do that with Mexico. You think that was easy? We had — I went to the — Mexican government. I said, we need — we need a lot of people coming over in these caravans. I came up with that name, I think. Thousands and thousands of people heading up. But they knew, yeah, sit down, everybody. You have a couple of minutes, right? Sit down. Sit down. Whoever has a seat, whoever's lucky enough, otherwise, I'm sorry. That's a little bigger crowd than we anticipated, by about triple. But we had all of these people uh, coming up. And I said to the Mexican government, remember, you know, the — the enemy, they say, he didn't get Mexico to pay for the wall like hell I didn't. I got Mexico to pay for 28,000 soldiers free of charge while we're building the wall. That was more money than paying for the wall. They paid — they were there for a long time. And they didn't uh, — they're not politically correct soldiers, either. These are soldiers that, you know, and they stopped it. And anyway, so uh, that was sort of interesting. Uh, the State Department, a woman that works at the State Department, a good woman, good woman. She's worked really covering Mexico, I think, for 20, 25 years. And I told her, I said, we're going to have to get Mexico to give us soldiers. Well, they won't do it. I said, yeah, they'll do it. And they're going to be free, too. Sir, they won't do that. And then I said, so remain in Mexico. I want the soldiers. We want catch and release ended. It's catch and release, but we release them in Mexico, not here. You know, catch and release is called we catch them. We find out they're criminals, and then we release them into our country. We say, come back in about five years for the trial, okay? Nobody ever comes back. No smart one comes back. A couple of them came back, but not too smart. But nobody ever comes back. This, so we had to get rid of that. But we had to go to Mexico. And I said to the top representative right under the president, and the president, I like him a lot. He's a socialist, but I like him a lot. I can't have everything, right? And I said, uh, we want 28,000 soldiers along our border because you're sending a lot of people over, and we want your soldiers to protect us, and we're not going to pay anything. And he, he laughed at me. No, 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 we're not going to do that, sir. Oh, sir. I mean, what a stupid request. How you would not — and I said, you're going to do it. I mean, 100 percent. Well, what do you mean 100 percent? I said, no, 100 percent you're going to do it. No, no, we will not do that, sir. What's next? I said, next is uh, remain in Mexico. People can't come into our country. They have to remain in Tijuana. They have to remain in — you have to see hundreds of thousands of people were — backed up, not in our country. They were remaining in Mexico. All of a sudden, Mexico got stronger on their borders, okay, because they didn't want this, because it was remaining in Mexico. And he said, no, no, we can't do that. We couldn't do anything. And I said, here's the story. On Monday morning at 7 o'clock, we're going to charge you a 25 percent tariff on any car. You know, they took 32 percent of our car industry over the years, not during my years, by the way. But they took 32 percent of our car industry. So we're going to have a any — any car, any product that's made in Mexico, when it comes across the border, we're charging a 25 percent tariff. And I have the legislation right here. I'm going to sign it. I have the right to do that. And uh, he said, you won't do that. I said, no, 100 percent I will, 100 percent. And I'm going to sign it right now. He said, sir, may I have five minutes? I'd like to call my country. He calls the country, comes back. Sir, it would be a great honor to supply you with 28,000 soldiers free of charge.
So I got 28,000. 28,000 soldiers. You know, 28, it's pretty good, right? Another little quick story. Should I tell you one other quick story? Yes? I mean, we're all having a good time. What the hell? I'm late for... I'm late for, as they say, the big venue. This is the big venue to me. This is a beautiful venue. This is our people. But uh, we had another case where France was going to charge American companies a tremendous uh, tax for the privilege of doing business in France. And I said, uh, I can't take that. You're not going to do that. And I called in some of my great geniuses, and I said, you'd call them up and you tell them we're not doing it and negotiate it where they don't have to do it. They come back a week later. No, they've already pretty much done it. They passed legislation. They're going to charge American companies a very significant, very big tax. And that's bad for American companies. So I'm supposed to be guarding American companies and American jobs and everything else. So I said, go back. You have another day. Go back and get it ended. And they came back and they failed. They were unable to do Treasury. They, weren't, they just were not able to do it. And I said, I'll do it. And I called up Macron, who's a very nice guy. And I said, uh, Mr. Macron, you remember me? Yes, I do. I do. I do remember. His name is Emmanuel. I called up. Uh, I said, Emmanuel, listen, you're going to be charging our company significant money to do business in France. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. It, it has taken a long time for us to work. Oh, that's fine. I think it's wonderful. So here's a story. If you go into this, and if this thing takes effect on Monday, we're going to have something that's of equal effect. Every bottle of wine and champagne that you send into this country, we're going to put a tariff on for 100 percent. And he said, he said to me, he said to me, you cannot do that. That would be terrible. I said, no, no, what you're doing is terrible. So you can call me back within five minutes, but this is, I've already signed it. On Monday morning, at 7 o'clock in the morning, every bottle of wine and every bottle of champagne gets taxed at 100 percent. And we're going to make a hell of a lot more money than you're going to make with your tax. He calls me back five minutes later. He says, we have decided to drop the tax on American companies. And there's so much. I mean, I could, I could tell you these stories all day long. I could tell you all day long. So we fully rebuilt the military. We have now peace through strength. You would have never had Ukraine and Russia. Russia would never, even the Democrats admit that. And I used to talk to Putin about it. I'd say, uh, you can't do it. You know, it was the apple of his eye, I will tell you. That I knew. But what, uh, I made it the unapple of his eye because I said uh, bad things are going to happen if you do that. And he didn't do it. He only started doing this after I was gone. All of a sudden, you see troops building up. Would have never done it, but we stood very proudly with our friend and ally, the State of Israel, kept to my promise, recognized Israel's eternal capital, and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. And not only did we have it designated as the capital, we got it built. I got it built. I took over a building. You all heard that story. I took over a building. They were going to spend $2 billion building a ridiculous building. They didn't even have the location. They had a plan without a location, which never works very well for architecture and architects. But I said, do we have a site? And they came back three, sir, we do. We have many sites in Jerusalem. I said, any of them with a building on it that we could convert? Yeah, we have one that's fantastic. The best site had a building on it. It was a closed building, but it was structurally very strong, very sound. And they got back to me and they said, my people, they said, we can do it for $400,000, sir. I said, first time I've ever done this in my life. I said, you know, honestly, that sounds too cheap. It sounds too cheap. I said, let's make it a little more, because that's crazy. So it was $2 billion. We got it down to 400000 We ended up building it. We, I said, make it five, and we made it five. We built it for 500000 A friend of mine is in an office building in New York, very rich guy, very successful guy. And every time I walk into his office, he talks about Jerusalem stone. He goes, look at the stone. It's so beautiful. I said, if I hear it again, now all of a sudden I'm in Jerusalem, right? So I say to my people, there's a very expensive stone. It's called Jerusalem stone. People are very impressed by it. It's a beautiful beige stone, like sand. Can we use it? Is it expensive? Sir, you're in Jerusalem. We can get it for nothing. I said, let's use it. So we did the whole building in Jerusalem stone, and it's beautiful. We got it built. So not only did we get it designated, but we got it built. And I recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. That was a big thing. They've been trying to get it done for years. 
And best of all, I got the Iran nuclear deal terminated. But unfortunately, this administration did not take advantage of it. They didn't take advantage of it. And bad things are happening. They're trying to build — they're building away a nuclear weapon. This would have never happened. We would have had a deal within two weeks after the election. We would have had a deal with Iran, and everybody would have been happy. So with your vote in January, I'll fight like no one else. And uh, it's very important. It's so important and so important that you are first, because I believe in this state very much, and I believe in the people. I have so many friends here. We'll totally obliterate the deep, deep state. We have a deep state. It was really deep. We got rid of Comey. We got rid of a lot of people, but it was deeper than anyone thought. And then we had the COVID, the dust from China. China virus came in. We did a great job with that. The stock market, when we turned it over, the stock market was actually higher than it was just prior to COVID or China virus coming in. So we did an amazing job in so many ways. We haven't been getting the kind of love on that one. We get a lot of love on the economy and a lot of things, but they never gave us one of the big things. And it was incredible. Don't forget, when that came in, that came in at a level that was nobody had ever — nobody knew what the hell was happening. Thousands of people were dying in China. That's all they knew. And they knew something bad was going on, but nobody knew exactly what it was. We did a great job on that with the ventilators and all of the therapeutics and Regeneron and all of the things we did, and the robes, everything. We did things that nobody thought could be done in a very short — and we supplied the states with all that stuff, because the states were all empty. I said their cupboards were bare. But we did that, and we did, you know, so many other things. We rebuilt our military. We did so much so fast that nobody's seen it. And some people say it was the most successful four years and one of the most successful presidencies by far ever, ever, you know? So, yeah. And one other thing for you, I'll, I'll tell you, I will ban the critical race theory and far left gender ideology from our school. And you've been hearing me say this. Uh, I will keep men out of women's sports, if that's okay. Because how ridiculous is that, right? Who would even think — who would even think — I mean, you go back 10 or 15 years, if you ever said a thing, people would say, why were you saying that? Was, how crazy is it? And they actually tried — you know, two weeks ago, they had a weightlifting contest, and the, uh, the weights were set for — I think it was 18 years women are trying to break it. And, you know, they put, a, like, a quarter of an ounce on each end of the — he — Wesley's a strong guy. He could do this. But they put, like, a quarter of an ounce on the women are trying to — this guy comes along and breaks the record, I think, by 46 percent or something like that. He walks up, and he was a weightlifter, not a successful one. As a man, he wasn't a successful, but he was a weightlifter. And he came in and he shattered the record. It's ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous. The swimmers, you got to see these new times that are being established. And uh, I tell the story, the woman looks left. She looks right, she recognizes him. Then she looks at this, this person that's like a giant. And she's saying, oh, with a wingspan bigger than Wilt the Still Chamberlain. Does anybody know Wilt the Still? And I always say, and we say jokingly, of course, but she suffered grave injuries windburn, because he went by her so fast <laughs> that she's still suffering massive windburn. No. The whole thing is ridiculous, okay? It's ridiculous. But I would be the greatest coach. If I were a coach, if I had that ambition to be a basketball coach, let's say, I'd go — I'm not a fan of LeBron James, frankly, but I'd go out, I'd get him. I'd say, LeBron, would you like to be a woman? And I'd get a few other guys. I'd say, would you like to be a — would you like to be a woman, anybody? I'm going to establish a team. We would go undefeated for many, many years. Can you imagine that? But the great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. I used to say that in 2016, and then I didn't have to say it. You know, another thing I didn't have to say, I used to talk about the border. We had a very bad border in 2016 when I was running. Border was a big part of the election. And in 2020, I couldn't talk about it because it was a solved problem. I used to say, we solved the border. And, you know, people have short memories. I'd say, we solved the border problem, and people didn't even remember they had a problem. So I couldn't even talk about it. But in 2016, it was probably the biggest thing. I used to talk about it all the time, build the wall, all the things that I did that I ended up doing, and we solved the border problem. So in 2020, I didn't have that. Who would think that now it's possibly the number one problem we have? I mean, when you look at our cities being overrun and everything else.
But we'll get it solved very quickly, and we'll get a lot of people — we'll get these people out. Because this is not sustainable by any country. No country could do it. No country is that rich. It's just not sustainable. With your help, your love, and your vote, we will make America first. It's about America first. I mean, these people want China first. They want other countries first, Ukraine first. They want all this stuff. We give every time somebody comes over from Ukraine, they walk out with $25 billion. And we want to help Ukraine. But, you know, Europe right now is up to $25 billion, and we're up to $200 billion. Now, one thing we all know is that it affects Europe a hell of a lot more than it affects us. So why are they not going with equalization? So they have to equalize. Let them put up. You know, Europe's about the same size as us if you add it all up. You add all the countries up, it's got about the same economy as we have. So they have a lot of money, Europe, but they don't pay the money because we have stupid people running our country. Very stupid people. You know, so. But remember, None of this can happen. None of what we're talking about. We're going to make our country so good. We're going to make it better than it was before. And we've learned, and I've learned. I also know everybody now in Washington. When I got there, the rhinos are recommending people, all this. We know so many people that — I know the good ones. I know the dumb ones, the smart — I know more people. I know the tough ones, the great ones. I know the people — I know the rhinos. I got to know the rhinos. They're, I think, a dying breed, but I got to know a lot of rhinos. You know what that is, right? Republican in name only. That's true. But we got plenty of them, but there are fewer than there were. But uh, you got to show up on Monday, January 15th. Defeating crooked Joe Biden is imperative because this country can't — I don't know if it can take another year. You want to know the truth. Okay? You know, we still have a year. I don't know that it takes another year, but we have no choice in that. So go to IA dot Donald J. Trump. IA dot DonaldJTrump.com and sign up to help us organize uh, what I will call the Victory for the Ages. This is going to be a Victory for the Ages. This is going to be bigger. You know, I used to talk about 2016. The 2016 is the biggest election of our lifetime, and I meant it 100 percent. Didn't say it in 2020 because we had a great thing going. We had the problem with COVID, but we had a great thing going. We had strong borders, nobody coming into it, very few people. Drugs were down to an all-time low. People coming in were down to an all-time low, and only getting better. If they left it alone, it would have been a beautiful thing. But they didn't do that. But we are going to make this country stronger and better and more beautiful than ever before. Not just get it back. We're going to make it better than ever before. But we have to win this election. So I just really appreciate everybody in this room. You've been my friends right from the beginning. Most of you from — and I recognize so many like you. I recognize so many. But uh, we have to go out, and we still have to win something. You know, we — we have a lot of great people watching. It's going to be very hard for them to cheat. They always cheat. That's what they do, is they cheat. That's what — that's the only thing they're good at. They're no good at policy. They're no good at borders. Think of it. Who wants an open border? Who wants high taxes? Who wants high interest rates? Who wants not to be able to buy a home? Who wants education that's a disaster? We're going to close the Department of Education, move it back to the States, by the way. So — so I really appreciate you being here, and you are it's just a special group of people. And we just wanted to make this stop, but you're the people that are going to really make it work. And we have phenomenal leadership with Alex and everybody else here. Uh, I just hope you — I hope we have a victory, because if we don't have a victory, I really think this country is — I think it's finished. It's finished. I really think it's finished. That's how — that's how bad it is. That's how bad it is. You know, these leaders of other nations, China is very powerful. They're all very powerful, especially now with the weaponry. If you don't have the right leader, if you don't have smart leaders, your country's in — your country's doomed. What they're allowing, like the speech he made yesterday, where he takes a vast sum of power in terms of a weapon and says he's terminated all of it. And then he's sad to say that the other countries haven't followed. Of course they haven't followed. Why? Because they're smart. Why would they follow? They want something for it. They want to do something. They want to get you to do it. You do it together, or you do it where they do it first. When you look at Afghanistan and that horrible withdrawal, the most embarrassing day in the life and the, the history of our country, the most stupid thing I've ever seen, where the soldiers are taken out first and everybody's stuck there, 
and we lost soldiers, and we have, to this day, many Americans probably living in hell right now. And we left back 85 — you know, I rebuilt the entire military. We left back $85 billion worth of equipment. Uh, I believe it was the most embarrassing day. Do you know that Afghanistan's one of the biggest arms dealers in the world right now? They're selling the stuff that we left for them. 70,000 trucks, 700,000 guns and rifles, 700,000. How we ever had so many in the first place is so crazy. But uh, we're going to make our country greater than ever before. Thank you very much. We'll take a couple of quick questions, and then we'll uh, — I'll shake a few hands. Question. Ma'am, go ahead. Hello. Hi. Welcome, President Trump. Thank you. Okay, so you kind of already answered my question a little bit, but my question was, when you become president again, what would the first thing you'll do to fix our current school system and even our current military that's only focusing on teaching woke gender yeah. ideology over learning the basics of life and history and protecting us? So, a good question. Now, I, some of it partially answered, but not all. Uh, with the military, we're ending woke immediately. You know, I ended woke, totally. And then they, in their first week, they reestablished it. It's crazy. They pay instructors hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It literally, I mean, literally, they want our military to be woke. Uh, and it's just not going to happen. You read in Hawaii where they had the horrible fire where they have people going there. And before they bring them on board, they have to study woke for a week. Can you believe this? In other words, everyone's wanting to get back to their home, finding the bodies. It was such a tragedy. You don't read about it too much anymore, but hell is going on over there. And they want to give them classes in essentially wokeness. Can you believe? So, you know, you've seen it. Well, we'll end that very quickly. We will, uh, with the school, I think the schools are very important. We're going to bring our education department back. now. If you look at our education, we pay more per pupil than any country in the world by three times. And yet, we're at the bottom of the list. We have a bad — very bad. If a place like Iowa, as an example, if you could run your own and we give you just a percentage of the money — because you wouldn't need nearly the money that they waste in Washington — number one, you love your students, you want your students, you know your students. The parents will be involved. That's the other thing. We're going to get the — let the parents — because some of these school boards have become tyrannical. They've been horrible. But we're going to bring that back, and that's going to answer your question, because uh, I think that we can have one of the best school systems in the world. Right now, we have one of the worst. Uh, they basically rate 40 countries, and we're always at close to the bottom of the list, sometimes the bottom of the list, and spending more money than anybody else. So we're going to take care of all of your needs very quickly, and I think it's going to happen very quickly. And one of the things we're doing, closing the border day one and starting drilling for oil. Okay? We're going to drill, baby, drill. Right? Okay. Do you have one over here? Yes, please. Welcome to Iowa, President Trump. Thank you very much. Um, here's my question. I felt that the 2020 election was fraudulent. So what measures are being taken by the RNC to um, make sure that that doesn't happen again? Okay. Well, you're not the only one, because if you look at polls, many, many people, big percentage of the country felt it was, uh, you know, they used COVID to cheat, but they did — they would have cheated anyway. Uh, many precautions, many law firms have been hired. A lot of work has been done. And beyond RNC, I mean, uh, I wasn't very thrilled with them, obviously. You know, I was always told, you go out, you campaign. I left here early in the morning, and you go home, and you — you know, you think you've done great. I actually made seven rallies on the last day or two. Seven. I don't know anybody's going to do seven rallies. And they're big rallies, and they were full-scale rallies. And I left, and I said, we're going to win. And at 10 o'clock in the evening, I looked at the numbers, and it was over. We were doing so well. Pennsylvania, all these states were doing so well. Then all of a sudden, they made adjustments and all this crap, and it was a horrible thing. So. They were able to do things with COVID. Oh, we can't go vote. We can't this. We can't that. Mail-in voting. We have a lot of great people involved. That's more than anything else. I say, I don't want help in getting the vote. I only want help. It used to be called election day. Now it's called election period, because some of these things last for like two months, right? I said, that's all I want. I want people to work, because we went back and we did great. And then the vote comes in, and then it, and it was looking great. And then all of a sudden, this horrible thing happened. And by the way, it's all down. People know it. We had judges that didn't want to get involved. They were afraid. Everybody was afraid. They were afraid of the subject. It's a, it's a disgrace. What happened to our country is a total disgrace, okay? Disgrace. So 
And look at and look at the result. I mean, look at the result. I mean, practically every problem that we talked about today wouldn't have happened. Ukraine wouldn't have happened. Inflation wouldn't have happened. I mean, so many of these things that we talk about today, we wouldn't even be thinking about. Uh, look at the supply chain. Who ever heard of a supply chain where people can't deliver? You couldn't get baby food. You couldn't get anything. The only thing you could get is all the drugs you wanted. You could get drugs. You could get cocaine. I wonder whose cocaine that was, by the way, in the White House. What about that deal? Packages of cocaine. And they said, well, we don't know. No, no, we don't know. And then when they went for the fingerprint thing, you know, everybody's there, fingerprints all. It was wiped clean. Not one fingerprint. Not one fingerprint, which is impossible. You can go to any place in this room, there's fingerprints all over the place, especially those cubicles. So uh, we're going to be working very hard. That's my number one thing, much more so than campaigning, actually, is that they don't cheat when they let, because they will try, and they'll be successful to an extent, but that we're not going to let them steal this election, because this country is going to fail. I tell you, I don't think the people of this country will allow it to happen either, because this country is on a very thin edge right now. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you. Appreciate it. I want to thank you, President, for all that you've done. And, and I, a question I want to ask you is, I'm, I'm telling you, no man can endure what you have endured. Do you, do you realize that God is behind you and strengthening you? Do you realize that? Well, I appreciate what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, too. It's been a terrible thing in so many ways. The only thing, the great gratitude I get, I'm looking at polls now where we're 50 points, 60 points up, you know, among all these people. And we're beating Biden in all these polls, or we're beating everybody. And uh, we have had to endure. We endured a fake Russia, Russia, Russia thing for years. We endured all of this stuff, all fake. And think of how bad these people were. A guy like Adam Shifty Shifty, he's a real bad guy. I call him pencil neck. He's got the smallest neck I've ever seen. He's not going to be playing for your local uh, teams, Iowa, Iowa State. They're not going to be recruiting him to play football. But Adam Schiff. He makes up with Hillary and with the Democrats. They make up the Russia, Russia, Russia scam. He knows it's a scam. Think about how bad. I have sons and daughters. And, you know, we love our sons and daughters, right? And I watch him on television one day. So he knows it's a hoax. Russia, Russia, Russia. It turned out to be a total hoax. No collusion. There was no, no anything. So he knows it's a hoax right in the middle. And he goes out to the microphones after leaving a meeting, which is supposed to be very, uh, you know, Quiet. Nobody's supposed to know what goes on in there. He goes out to the microphone. He goes, the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., will go to prison for what he's done. Now, he knows it's a hoax. Think of it. It's not like I'm reading and seeing, and I watch this guy talking. Uh, me. I'm watching him saying that my son is going to prison. My son is going to prison. And I know that he had nothing to do. There was nothing. There was a whole thing was made up. It was a made up. So you know why it was made up? It was an excuse why Hillary lost. They said, let's blame Russia. And it was supposed to be a one day deal. But the fake news wouldn't let it be one day. And the fake news carried it and on and on and on. We have the same thing right now. It's going on still. Do you know that if I and I got indicted, but because the people know me so well, they know it's it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. They know that. <laughs> And think of it. They say, they say he questioned the election. He questioned, well, everybody in this room questioned the election. The Democrats questioned 2016. They were all standing up. They were forming cards. They were forming all sorts of things. They were all, and those are the same guys that now that say we'd, it's so corrupt. Washington's a corrupt place. But think of it, you're watching some guy on television, a high-ranking congressman, say that your son is going to prison, and he knows that it was a hoax. I mean, how bad do you have to be to do that? And then it gets, you know, no collusion after two and a half years. And then two weeks go by, and I had a little piece. I focused on China and other things. It's almost the easy subject, right? I focused on the easy things like China, Russia. And then they start with, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. He made a phone call to Ukraine. It was a perfect phone call. You know, that phone call turned out to be absolutely nobody's ever seen anything. 
everything I said was right about, please study. If there's any corruption, please report it to the Attorney General of the United States, etc. It turned out to be exactly right. A lot of people are saying right now they've got to undo even the theory of those indictments because those indictments were fake, just like everything else. So we have to get back to making our country great again. But you're right. Many people ask me that question. They say, how do you, how do, you do it? And I do it because I feel real love and I feel real appreciation. And I do it because it's more important than anything else I could do. I could be living a very nice life, a very nice life in the most beautiful places all over the world. And here I am with you in Iowa, and I'd rather be here. I'd rather be here. So thank you very much. Very nice. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Mr. President. My question for you is, what are you going to do to make future generations more successful than what we are right now? Well, we have to save our country first. I really do. I mean, it's a great question in a way, but uh, I think our country, we have 30, almost 36 trillion in debt. Uh, we are probably, if, if this group keeps running, think of what's happened. We used to be allies with Saudi Arabia, a lot of money, a lot of everything, a lot of energy. We didn't need their energy. That was a beauty. But we were allies with all these different countries. Everyone's left us. Brazil is up with China now. Saudi Arabia is with China. Many of the Middle Eastern countries, a lot of oil, a lot of money, they're with China. We've lost it. The whole of South America is with China. This all happened over the last two and a half years. It's unbelievable. We have no relation with all the money we waste on trying to bribe friendship. You know, we try and bribe our friendships. We're not with anybody. We don't have anybody. And Europe honestly takes advantage of us on trade and on NATO. They take total advantage of us. And, you know, you see that with Ukraine. We're trying to help them. And the problem is Biden got so far ahead of this thing that now, you know, they're saying, well, why should we have to put up money? The stupid Americans are putting it all up. You know, that's what happened. Europe is we're 200 billion and they're 25 billion. And it's right at their doorstep. And we, are, we have an ocean in between us. It's much different. So the first thing, just to answer your question, we have to save our country. Okay? Sad. It's a sad answer, but it happens to be true. Okay, how about we do one more? We always have to end on a good one, okay? We have to end on a very good one. Hi, President Trump. Hi. Um, First of all, I just want to say that I love and respect you so much, and I want to thank you for being America's biggest fighter. So um, there's that. But I also, less of a policy-related question, I just want to know if you have any words of advice or encouragement for um, a lot of us young conservatives who are afraid to speak out, as you may know. Um, I definitely know from being a student at Iowa, Hawkeye State, by the way. Well, good. Um, good. <laughs> and uh, I just want to know, school. you know, especially with the caucus coming up, we need to get a lot more young people out there. So I'd just like to know if you have any thoughts on how we could be better patriots to get you so back okay, in there. It's, it's so great that you asked that, and with such enthusiasm and everything, it's so great. So remember this. There are far more of you than you think. You don't see them. You don't see them. I know people in Beverly Hills. I see them on television. We will stop Trump, but they go in and vote for me, you know? It's, no, it's true. It's like you think it's woke. It's not. You look at the percentage of votes and everything else, if you can count on them, which you basically can't. But look, you just keep your thoughts and keep, because you happen to be doing the right thing. There are many, many more of you than you understand. There are many more of you than there are of them. And a lot of them are you, because it's common sense. You know, they say, are you a conservative? Are you? Whether you're conservative, yeah, I'm conservative, but I'm really a person of common sense. We need a wall. We want low taxes. We want good education. We want to be able to build and buy houses. You know, nobody can buy houses anymore because the interest rates are so high. Remember when they were high? I was jawboning that guy. Get them down. You better get them down. They said you can't fire the head of the Federal Reserve, but he thought he was going to be fired. And, uh, you know, you take a look at interest rates, what's happening right now. You just stay just the way you are. You shouldn't change at all and just go out there. And people respect you, and they respect you more than you would ever think. And there's so many of you, okay? And you're going to a great school. Thank you all very much. Get out and caucus and have a good time. Thank you, everybody.